Are you faced with making closing entries with a net loss and not quite sure what to do? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you how easy it is to make closing entries with a net loss. But first, I want to say I believe something great is going to happen for you today. Now back to the video. If you're someone who finds accounting tricky, go ahead and smash that like button and that way I and the YouTube algorithm will know to make more videos making it easy. Thank you. All right, in today's video, we're going to talk about closing entries for a net loss. I have done a prior video showing how to do closing entries with a net profit. If you missed that video, I've linked it up here. You can check that out later. Here we've got some balances in our service revenue, our wages expense, our rent expense, and our other expenses and retained earnings, and they are appropriately debit or credit balances for us to work from. <clears throat> We're gonna close out the accounts for service revenue, wages expense, rent expense, and other expenses, and then we're gonna then close out the income summary account to the retained earnings account. Let's do that using some general journal entries. The first one we need to close out is our service revenue account. And you see that it's sitting with a credit balance of 100,000. So to close it out, in other words, to zero it out, we're going to need a debit of $100,000 to that account. So I'm going to debit service revenue. Let me go ahead and slide this up. I'm going to debit service revenue $100,000. And of course, for our general journal entries, we always need to have a balancing for our debits and credits. So we need a credit of $100,000. And that's going to be to the income summary account. And remember, we always put our debits first and our credits second. And we always indent for our credits. So now we've shown that we've closed out the service revenue account. Let's close out the wages expense account. We see that sitting with a debit balance of 75,000. So we need a credit balance, a credit of 75,000, but we always do our debits first. So we're going to debit our income summary for 75,000. And we're going to credit wages expense for 75,000. And you can see that would close out or that would zero out our wages expense account because we've credited 75,000 to it. So it's zeroed out for the beginning of the next term. Let's close out our rent expense account. We have a debit balance of 12,000. So we know we need to credit that account for 12,000. And again, we're going to debit our income summary account for that $12,000. And then our credit will be to the rent expense for 12,000. So that zeroes out that account. And finally, I've just lumped everything else into other expenses. And we're going to go ahead and take care of that account as well. And that's for 25,000. So I'm going, I'm going to debit income summary. And of course, for each of these accounts, each of these transactions, we could have a description here. It's probably a good idea to have a description. In other words, closing out income summary, closing out wages, expense. Just to save time, I'm not going to put that in here at the moment. Income summary, and that is for the 25000 of our other expenses. And we're going to credit other expenses. For 25000 
All right, so that closed out that account. Now we're going to leave the retained earnings for the moment. I like to look at these with T accounts, so we have a good idea of how this works. So I've created a T account called Income Summary. And let's go ahead and do all the transactions for the Income Summary portion. So you can see the first one here is we're going to credit Income Summary for 100000 So I'm crediting it for 100000 then our next transaction, we're going to debit income summary for 75,000. So I'm going to debit 75,000. Income summary gets debited again for 12,000. And then when we close out the other expenses, we debit income summary for 25,000. All I'm doing is transferring these debits over to here and any credits for income summary to here. Now let's see what we have in our debits and credit balance. Our credit balance is simple. It, I just bring down 100,000. On the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and use my BA2 plus calculator to find out what the left hand side is, the debit side. So I have 75,000 plus 12,000 plus 25,000. And that's a hundred and twelve thousand on the debit side. So we can see this account is not balanced. It is got a larger debit balance than credit balance. So let's now look at the retained earnings. Our retained earnings. We know we had a beginning balance of fifty thousand credit. And so I've got that in our T account for retained earnings of 50,000. That's at the beginning of the year. Now we're going to close out our income summary account to our retained earnings. And since we've got 112,000 on this side and 100,000 on this side, we know that we need to credit 12,000 to the income summary account. And our offsetting debit is going to be to retained earnings. For 12,000. So let's see what our new retained earnings balance is. If I just put that into the calculator, I have 50,000 as our beginning balance. And I'm going to, because it's a debit, I'm going to subtract 12,000. So that means our new retained earning balance is 38,000. Our retained earnings have gone down because we had a net loss, that net loss of $12,000. So net losses reduce our retained earnings. If we were to pay out any dividends, it would come out of retained earnings as well. But that is how you do the closing entries when there is a net loss. Your own closing general journal or T accounts. I've got links down below where you can download your own copies and it will help you work through these problems. You now know how to do closing entries when there's a net loss, but there's so much more you need to know. So subscribe to my channel and smash that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.